Well, it's the end of May, going on June, and I'm using my fireplace, and I'm huddled in the cold. It was 45 today. Pretty insane. This is the weirdest year I've ever seen, as far as my memory goes back. Well, today is Electricity and Electronics Day, so I'm going to try out my new LED lights here. I just want to string these up real quick. I'm just going to light this thing and see what it'll do, and then I'm going to cut off a section and hang it up as a little bit of a work light over my one workbench because it's too dark over there. At first I just want to see how this looks. It's just a 12 volt cigarette lighter plug in. I'm going to plug into my wall and whoa! That's bright. I bet that made the camera dim down. Yeah, it did. That makes the camera adjust itself. Wow. Well, let's see what these will do under my cabinet. Well, Real quick, test see how this looks here for a minute. It's bright. I think this is going to turn out nice. So, just on the other desk over here, you can see me work. I'm going to string a piece up about this far just to see if I can light up my desk. This is interesting stuff. That's about what I need right there. You see there's the cut line. Let me plug this in and see how it looks here. Wow. Wow. That makes a huge difference in this place. That's incredible. I'll be able to work here with that on. This nice where I want it here. Right there. But cuts easy. Cuts really easy. So if you can see over here what I'm doing. Got a uh, sticky tape on the back. Oh. Yep. So I'm just going to stick this up. Okay, now, can you see my work area? Yes. I'm going to plug that in, see how it looks. Almost looks like a fluorescent light. It makes a difference on my desk. Look at that work area, that looks good. Get my hand back in there and unplug that. I'm going to have to put a switch on it. Here's the darkness. And the light. It makes a huge difference. The camera dims it, but my eyes don't. So, uh, this really makes a difference in here. Look at that. I can see everything. This is good. 
let me try that again. Unplug the light. Yeah, the camera adjusts itself. I watch that dark corner there. Lit right up. I can see. I can see what I'm doing here. I can see my stuff. This is good. I am really impressed with the quality of these lights. My little old Bedini motor has died. I don't know what happened or why, but my transistor heated up today when I plugged it in. I don't understand. I don't remember doing anything wrong last time I used it. I don't remember hurting it or abusing it. This is going to be awkward. So I've killed my transistor. At some point in time. I don't know, this has been sitting around for a while. But it got so hot. Surprised I didn't start a fire. That one's ready for the garbage bin though. So I'm heating up my soldering iron here. This is all off-grid solar power. Heating up my soldering iron. I'm going to repair my old SSG. So I'm preparing a new transistor to replace the old one. It's a mystery how, it, how or why it died, but... Very cheap soldering iron I'm using. Probably not going to heat this up. There it goes. I had to switch irons. My cheap dollar store one was not working. I got good old faithful out. What I've done is I've put the I put a new one in 4001 diode in here I'm just going to try to take these wires off here burnt my finger again Okay, so this one is garbage. Don't know what happened to it, but it's junk. See if I can get these wires onto here. Coax them onto these new transistor. Well, today, despite the miserable weather, it's uh, been raining a lot and it's quite cold. Um, we're going to work in the property and clean this all up. We're going to put up some deer netting around the garden. Going to move these pallets out of the way, clean up the whole area. And something new has showed up. I now have a 275 gallon water tank. It's going to be set up here and hopefully even filled with creek water today and soon I'll be taking hot showers. 
Well, my friend has cut down some saplings we're going to use for larger stakes. I just don't have the money for real uh, stakes, so he's helped me out. Um, he's vanished on me. I sent him off to look for a uh, sledgehammer out in the wilderness shopping mall, and uh, he's never come back. So, so we've staked out the border using these thin stakes that I had. Fortunately, I got them at a yard sale last year. I'm so happy I got them. I think I spent like two dollars for the bunch of them. The same ones are at Tractor Supply for two dollars a piece. So happy I got them. I staked out the border of the garden. It's going to be a uh, hundred feet from corner to corner all the way around. It's a hundred foot border. So it's going to be a large sized garden. Well, 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 he's there digging and putting in fence posts. I'm uh, going to work over here. I'm cleaning up the leaves to minimize critters. There's all these leaves out here, a mess. I'm going to rake up these leaves into a wheelbarrow and haul them off into a compost heap to uh, help clean this place up and try to mi minimize the mice and the bugs and stuff around here and make it look nicer. Well, I started trimming the grass back a little bit further to keep ticks down, but uh, till my mower quit, I guess it doesn't like the wet weather. Um, trimmed all through here again, although it's raining, I had no choice, I had to trim it. Now, I don't know if you can see the frame here. Yeah, you can see the line of stakes, I think. And uh, here's one of the end posts that my friend is putting in. And what we're doing is replacing these little stakes with these big end posts. And then we'll run the deer netting up. So. My birds are wet, but they're making little happy sounds. I think the babies are happy because they're cuddling with each other for warmth. It's quite cold. Well, that's a happy baby peeping noise. So the chicken tractor is working out. It's keeping them dry. It's, uh, it's doing its job. And they're all cozy and comfy. So anyway, it's lunchtime. Let me take you over to where we're starting our outdoor rain-filled Memorial Weekend barbecue. All right, what are we doing here? Hey, what's going on? Uh, it's a real pleasure to be in one of Troy Tech Man's videos. Okay. I'm a good friend of his. Uh, my name is Luke. Hi. And uh, over here, we got a fire. Troy, you might want to do a little zoom in. I don't see a fire. Well, we will have a fire. Okay, right. so what we've got here is we've got a bunch of uh, twigs. And when you build a fire, you always have to start small. Always. You can't think big. You can't think big sticks and gasoline because it just doesn't work. It's not like going to the park and lighting your charcoal. So it takes a while. It's taken me about uh, 10 minutes. I went around and I looked for a bunch of dry twigs that were still on trees. Uh, you got to make sure you don't get green ones. They have to snap off clean. If they don't snap off clean, they're still green. And on the trees, why? Uh, because if it's raining, well, particularly... It's been it's raining, raining for two weeks. Um, anything that's standing upright is going to be dry. But your difficulty is, see, Troy here has this nice fireplace, but all his charcoal is wet. Soaked. So as soon as I put these sticks on the bottom to elevate my other twigs, they got they soaked. They got wet. So we're going to try here to see uh, you think that's gonna burn? if we can get this going. We're either going to have a fire or an empty cigarette lighter. We'll see. Or Luke's going to burn his hands. Let's see what comes first. Oh, I like that smell. So we're attempting to have our Memorial Weekend barbecue today. Sort of. Uh, due to the rain, I did not invite too many people out. I didn't feel like torturing too many people today. It's just two of us hardcore workers here that don't mind some rain and cold. Um, it is raining all day. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add some larger twigs. you got to do it in stages, otherwise it's not going to light. As you can see, it's starting to pick up. And I'm just going to lay these I on. I do have to say, I'm impressed. I, uh, I mean, it's wet. It's really wet. I'm just gonna lay, and it was important to get all of my twigs off of the wet charcoal underneath. So that's why you put the layer that's down first. That's why I put the yeah, layer down first. Good thinking. Because if that doesn't, if all my twigs get wet when I lay them down, yeah. I'm not going to have a fire. Right. 
Oh, we do have a fire. That's definitely uh, good. It means we're going to have some... We're going to cook some hot dogs with some Now, if sticks. you look up here, I had everything organized. I have my, all, my, all my little tiny twigs up here. And oh, I have right. some that are a little bit bigger. Prepared all my other ones that I just put on were sitting right here yeah. behind them. I have some that are actually just a little bit bigger. Okay. And now I'm going to lay those on because my fire is starting to go. All right. So I'm going to lay those on now. And as you can see, i got some bigger ones. And then by the time that catches, I should be able to break this up All and this keep up with stuff it. stuff that I'm sort of standing on. Yep. And it's really important to try to maintain a, a semi-dry surface. Now you can see this wood got really wet just being right here. Yeah, it's smoking heavy. And you can see that you can see there's the some oil coming, coming out, out and there's some moisture coming out right there. Some moisture some shininess out of that there. wood there. But, but the it has been raining. Yeah, and the way Troy has this built, it's really nice. The, there's a nice flow of air coming in here and it flows out the back. As you can see, there's no smokes coming out the front. And this is where I made my maple syrup. That's why I put this up for. And hopefully uh, this is going to be the basis of a rocket stove for summer cooking and uh, maybe for some showering. Yep, and so I'm going to add the rest of my sticks here. I'll try to put up about half of them in the front. Reach around and try to put half in the back. All right, well, I'm going to shut off the camera for now. We'll be back once we have a fire roaring here. I'm making hot dog sticks. Well, Luke cuts the firewood for us for our grill. We're going to skewer the hot dogs and cook them over the fire with some sticks. Well, we've got a very smoky fire but we've got a fire and when that burns down a little bit we'll be able to do our grilling and at least we won't starve today and uh, look at all that smoke and we won't have any bugs yeah <laughs> and as an added bonus even though we stopped the video the fire didn't stop so we did do that on just that short amount of time with the lighter oh yeah well nobody knows how much time elapsed but it was just about I don't know 10 minutes not even yeah so, and Luke cut all my wood. I think uh, I'm going to try to beg him to somehow coerce him into cutting my firewood. Ha uh ha. -huh. He did a good job. Hot dog's in the way. I know, my hot dog is in front of my camera. <laughs> so, there's a floating hot dog. And it's going into the fire. <laughs> you can fit, pal. <laughs> So this is a Pioneer um, holiday barbecue, sort of. Well, here's our humble, rainy barbecue. I can see my breath. We'll have a better barbecue later. I don't know if you can see that. And uh, It's hot. It's cold. You think, you think next time people will we'll, we'll arrange it so that we can have Well, I think the weather there. was bad, but you know what? We're working. Yeah. We're eating. We're happy. That's all that matters. You think we can arrange a bigger one later? Maybe. Maybe next time. Maybe some people but can come this, out and help out. This camper is an awesome place to have a barbecue in the rain. It has definitely served me in multiple ways. Well, as is typical with most days, with a good day of hard work, we didn't accomplish everything I wanted, but we did get the deer fence up. And now that it's up, the garden actually is quite large. I, um set it up so I have room to walk on each side of this. I have plenty of room. Um, I still have to put up this front wall. I'm still wiring. My friend had to leave. It's 7 o'clock already in the evening. But I have um, 5 foot of space along the outside edges all the way. Every outside edge there's 5 foot of space between the garden and the deer fence in all directions so that I can train my vines to grow out as I said I was going to. The vines are all going to be on the outside edges and trained to go out this way. And I'll probably put a trellis up here a couple feet over so they can go up and I can squeeze my way through along the fence. So uh, we used 
saplings right out of the forest, cut them and pounded them in. Now I've got these short tractor supply stakes. These are actually for electric fence um, that I happen to have. I'm so happy I had them because otherwise I would not have been able to finish this today. It was just too much work. But it's mostly done. I have to finish some wiring and get the front done. And then we got this tank here. We just took that off the truck. Uh, my friend Neil from uh, actually not too far away, he brought this over. And the same guy that gave me the um, meter for the charge controller. So thank you so much, Neil. Thank you. That's a 275 gallon tank. That means I can shower. When I get this thing filled, I can take showers. So uh, look at my little 30 gallon tank next to it. I'm trying to figure a way now to haul water from the creek to get to this thing. That would be nice because the rainwater in four days of rain I've collected about 30, 25, 30 gallons only of rainwater. So um, I still have a lot of uh, work to do to get, start getting enough water for showers. Now right here by this ladder, actually the ladder is right in the doorway. The entrance of the garden is going to be here. Um, those are basically pounded in deeply, about 18 inches deep, and they're going to hold the framework when I build it up. For tonight I'm just going to twist tie it on with wire. But it's a start. I have a garden and it should hopefully be protected from deer. I'm going to put some rattly, noisy making things on here to hopefully scare them off and uh, figure out what to do against rabbits. We move the chicken tractor. You can see, even in this dim light, the, they mowed it down to nothing. And we have moved the chickens over. Uh, my friend helped me. Look at the tall grasses. These birds are happy. Listen to them. That's happy bird noise. They're mowing down. But this is what it looked like a minute ago. It's hard to see in this dim light. It's tall. Well, you can see where I mowed. It's getting dimmer, so it's really hard to see the contrast here. But this is about um, almost two foot high grasses here. Actually, there's three foot high grass in places already. So I'm just going to keep pushing the chicken tractor into this tall grass and let them mow it down each day. My little babies are toughing it out. They're surviving the cold all right. I was worried about them in these really cold nights. It was 45 by a high yesterday. I don't know what it was at night, but they're doing okay. They're surviving. So, that's good. This is my little rooster. I got him for five dollars. Little Bantam. He isn't going to get much bigger. He's a really gentle bird. Hey guy. You're a good bird, aren't you? Hey rooster. He's mellow. I like that. Well, chicken tractor, solar panels, rainwater collection, massive garden. Quite the homestead I've built up here. So much in such a short time. It's quite amazing. There, I'm tired. I still got a lot to go. So much to do. Because now it's time to get serious about planting. I've only got these two front beds are planted. And uh, yes, I planted them a little dense. That's all onions, and they're supposed to be spaced three feet, three inches apart, three to six inches. And I put them about three, four inches apart. Um, the onions will be pretty much come and gone by the time tomatoes are too high. So I timed it. I set up things that'll time with each other well. I mounded up the potatoes today, the ones that were poked through high enough already. And as they grow, I'll keep mounding up around them. There's the other potato hill. I think I still have some more potatoes and some onions or garlic. Some garlic and potatoes still to put in. This higher mound had nothing. That's going to be corn in the middle. 
and um, probably some chilies around the outside and some um, herbs and lettuce around the outs very outside ring. This is all herbs. There's my seed bombs that are really a bomb, I have to say. I'm not impressed. And yes, they've gotten about, they've been out here I think three weeks and they've gotten rain pretty much every day in three weeks. So, and then this is mounted up high and this is going to have the same as the other high mounted one. I'll have corn in the middle uh, surrounded by some other plants very, ranging from large up to small at the edges.